All right, y'all. It's getting to that point in the game where I'm struggling to come up with topics. I mean, it's always self-care, but I'm sure y'all get sick of me blabbing about my journey to being me and all this stuff that I've gone through. Mm. And at some point, all that will end. I mean, quarantine can't go on forever, and I just can't keep talking about myself. So before I do get started, <laughs> and today's a long list, so just bear with me. Um, yeah, when I started doing this, Eddie reminded me of that Kristen Wiig movie, This Is Me, where she wanted to show all about herself. And that's a bit what this feels like a little bit, so um, there's that. But anyways, um, I don't know. Hopefully I provide just a bit of entertainment for your day, and maybe I need to start doing more entertaining things. I don't know what that looks like, and I still have not fixed that tilt, but I'm just gonna stop it right there. <sighs> I feel so much better now that I fixed that, so yes, it did shift a little bit. Um, hopefully it's better on your end. It makes me feel better, and isn't that really what it's all about? Anyways, I hope I provide just a bit of entertainment for your day. At any rate, those who know me probably still don't know that I received a degree in comparative literature from the University of Georgia. What is complet, everyone asks, and yes, that's what we call it, because really try saying com comparative literature so many times fast. Okay, so I love this wiki definition because I go to Wikipedia for everything, and I have been since 2005, which is why my friend Rob Baringhouse made me my own Wikipedia entry article in 2005, which was promptly deleted. Anyways, comparative literature is an academic field dealing with the study of literature and cultural expression across linguistic, national, geographic, and disciplinary boundaries. Comparative literature performs performs a role similar to that of the study of international relations, but works with languages and artistic traditions so as to understand cultures from the inside. I loved comparative literature because I got to basically create my own course of study, so to speak, without having to go, go the whole inter interdisciplinary study route. It was what I was looking for. At first I was considering the interdisciplinary study route, but then I found complete and I was like, this degree works for so much of that because I love reading, I love art history, I love history itself, I love film, and I love drama. How did I manage to combine all that and poetry uh, into this major? It's already there, and it's not just focused on English literature, but literature across the boards, which is why I took Spanish and French. I studied abroad in France as well. Don't ask me to speak any French because I get horrible anxiety from it. But anyways, I digress. Now. Originally, freshman UGA me thought I was going to be a journalist. I went into college with enough AP credits to put me halfway through my freshman year. I had a plan to apply for Grady School of Journalism. They issued the very prestigious Peabody Award, took the test, and got in my sophomore year studying magazine journalism. Meanwhile, my life was unraveling as I didn't know how to deal with the problems that ailed me, but by chance to fill up an elective, I took an intro complex course. Now, by this point, I was a journalism English double major with my life falling apart, really. And I alluded to it in the previous episode where my little cross-country road trip. Uh, <laughs> anyways, long story short, I dropped out of Grady and switched my English degree over to comparative literature because that intro course of English, talking about breaking down a poem into trochee, iams, pyrrhics, and whatnot lip left so many scars on me. <laughs> it was the best decision of my life. I got introduced to so much amazing world literature. I took a Nigerian two Nigerian literature courses, one African literature course, one Nigerian film course. That was fun. Um, also took an Indian or South Asian South Asian film class. Amazing. I wanted to take the drama one as well, but my scouter wouldn't allow it because by that point I was commuting back and forth between. Athens, Atlanta, and my parents' house in Forsyth. Anyways, I still have nightmares about so vast a prison, but now that I'm older and a little bit more womaner, I do want to re-explore that novel. Maybe that can be part of the book club as well. Pay attention to the end of the episode. Anyways, really, my whole complete experience at UGA deserves its own episode and how life-saving it was for a young artist like me. Rilko's letters to a young poet were also my through lines throughout my entire sabbatical. But now, I spent so much time talking about that that I don't have that much time to talk about my favorite book in the entire world. A Little Life. Literature with a capital L. 
A Little Life is a 2015 novel by American novelist Hanya Yanagihara. I hope I pronounced that right. Someone please correct me if I did not. The novel was written over the course of 18 months. That's the little Wikipedia blurb. Didn't that fall so beautifully? It won't stand. There. <laughs> I tickle myself. It was written over the course of 18 months. Again, thank you for that, Wikipedia. Um, now, there are some books in my life that I have that I become so obsessed with that I can't stop reading them. Every book I got growing up was immediately consumed with a voracious appetite, although, to be fair, a lot of that was Animorphs and Harry Potter later on. So, take with that what you will. Um, I feel like there's more in there, but whatever. Anyways, fast forward to when I acquired more adulterous tastes. East of Eden, 100 Years of Solitude, Anna Karina, Anna Karenina, Anna Karenina, one of those could be correct. We'll find out. After a couple of years, after the first hundred pages for each of those, probably. Like, it took me a hundred pages to get in, and then that took a bit of time. And then once those hundred pages, yes, flew past it. All consumed with intensity after the first hundred pages, and usually finished in less than 24 hours after the first hundred pages. <laughs> Something about those first hundred pages. This book, it's on that list. It's on the list of books that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Because not only is it for me literature with a capital L, it's literature with a capital L where three of the four protagonists are gay slash queer, and two of the four protagonists are black, and the one straight protagonist is a black man who grew up on the Upper East Side and ends up becoming an architect with the blandest existence ever. Now, if that is not if you don't understand why that's life changing, then you just need to read more literature, for me at least. Anyways, when I say I felt seen when reading this book is an understatement, and I cried at that aspect alone, never mind all of the terrible tragedy that Jude goes through in his life. Willem and his acting career is just the stuff of dreams, and how he falls into his relationship with Jude is the stuff of star-crossed lovers tragic love story dreams and the unrequited love J.B. feels towards Willem, and the angst and anger that he has towards Jude, which is just weird. And the way that J.B. has so much talent and potential and pisses it away initially, but makes a comeback. Oh man, okay. And let me just talk about J.B. for a minute because when I first read this book, I think it was in 2015. It was, <laughs> I know. Um, when I first read this book, and I read J.B., here's what I first thought after finishing it. I thought, I want to become a better actor. I want to become a better actor in the possibility that this book is made into a movie that somehow I could just have a small role just being a server in a background scene. That's... <laughs> this book is amazing. It, it really is. Uh, yeah. It prompt, this book prompted me to become a better actor and to further my craft. And Malcolm, steady Malcolm, you can't forget about him. Now the only person I didn't see myself in, and it did not have to do with because it probably did. Anyways, the only one I didn't see myself in was Willem. He's prairie Midwestern via Northern Europe. His parents are directly from one of those Nordic countries that I cannot remember which one. Then there's also the fact that he identified as straight for the majority of it, but he just becomes a lover of people at the end of it. And it's also because Willem is relationship material ideals, like hashtag goals. Willem doesn't exist in the real world, and yet you kind of hope that he does. And the love that he shares with Jude, it's not so much about gender, but about what two people see in each other. I mean, Eddie's my Willem, so. At its core, this is an 800-something page about friendship, specifically male friendship and intimacy and love in all its many splendid forms. And yes, I know I talked about wanting to play a role in this, and really it was wanting to play JB, but now that I've transitioned, that looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Yes. But this is an 800-something page book about friendship, intimacy and love and all of its many splendid forms. Oh, and the way that Jude finds his parents. Oh my God, please read, mm, read it. Look, okay, how about this? Let's do this. 
you tell me somehow if you've read this or go read it and I'll reread it for the third and fourth time because that's how much I love this book. And I tell you what, we'll have a Zoom book club. How about that? We can just chat all, all however long we can about how great and magnificent this book is and how I am unable to read the novel preceding this by Hanya Yanagihari. Yanagihara. I'm really hard with pronunciations for someone who took comparative literature. And in the meantime, let's get together this Friday at 4.30 for a live get together. So my friend Clorinda and I will be your high priestesses for mass, our mutual admiration society social. Now, Clorinda and I's friendship, it's only been a year, but look, she saw me when we first met and we both started crying. This was when I was just starting to present female and I went to a Seed and Spark symposium about making films and all that other good stuff and crowdfunding and I met Clorinda and literally she was like, I see you and I started crying. <laughs> Our friendship is based on lifting each other up and supporting each other. It's the mutual admiration. And we want to share that. So come join us by DMing either one of us for the Zoom link or look out for a way to watch on Facebook. Tears. <laughs> now I'm going to go to a laser treatment appointment where they're going to zap my face and it's going to feel like mm, all the stings. Um, but as always, as always, keep bearing the lightness of being. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. Read this book. Come join us on Friday, 4.30, Eastern Standard Time, Daylight Savings Time. Come join us. Love you.